Hi there. In this demonstration, we're going to see how to conduct a chi-squared test of independence using SPSS. This is sometimes called a test of association. We'll be doing example one from chapter 11.2 from Stevens's Introduction to Statistics, the Think and Do book. And what we have is a distribution of grades by gender in a class with 72 students. And it creates this contingency table, right? Where we have the columns consist of the grades and the rows here, gender. So we have two variables, grade and gender, all right? And we want to see if there's a dependent relationship between the two variables or a significant dependent relationship. And so when we did this in the book and did everything by hand, we got a chi-squared test statistic of 2.724, which has a p-value of 0.605, which was too big um, for our 0.05 significance level. It would be too big for any significance level. And we failed to reject the null hypothesis that the variables are independent. And so we conclude um, something to the effect of grade and gender are not significantly dependent for this class or are not significantly associated, if you will. Um, so when we're doing this in SPSS, we're gonna, it's going to be in two parts. In, in the first part, we're going to um, bring this data in as a frequency table. right? And a frequency table format is just like this contingency table, except that each cell in this contingency table is represented by a row in the frequency table. right? Male A's, there were eight of them. Female A's, four, and on and on. That corresponds to this contingency table. In the second part of the video, we'll see how to do this in SBSS when the data is in standard format. Specifically, each row is a case, and each column is a variable, right? So that in this case, we'll have 72 cases where each case, each row, is a student. The first student is a male who got a B. Second student is a female who got a C, and so on. Right? So let's pull up SPSS. We'll first do um, the frequency table format because there's a preliminary step you have to take care of. So frequency table. So um, this is that table right there. And if you think about this in terms of data in the standard format, this first row, this case, is male A's, right? And we know there were eight of them. So really what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to weight this case with the number eight. We'll weight the next case, female A's, with the number four. So we're going to weight these cases. And to do that, you go up to data. All the way to the bottom, it says weight cases. And we are going to weight cases by frequency. And we will click OK. And it says, weighted by frequency. This weight off was from a preliminary step. Weighted by frequency, good. OK, so now we're going to do the chi-square test. And it's in an unusual place in that it is under analyze descriptive statistics. Oh, there's a hypothesis test going on in the background. But it's under descriptive statistics cross tabs. right? That contingency table is also called a cross tabulation table. So that's where it's found in SPSS under cross tabs. So we click that and we're going to make gender was the row variable, grade was the column variable. We go to statistics, we click this button and we have to check the chi-squared box otherwise we won't get our chi-squared uh, test statistic and p-value. Click continue and then we go to cells and you can it, it will by default put the observed counts in there, which is basically what was in that contingency table. You can also um, see the expected counts that um, would be there if indeed the variables were independent. That would be what you would expect. Um, so we'll actually leave those in there. You can also do percentages by row by total. It gets a little messy if you put too much in there. We'll click continue. And then we'll um, have SBS build a uh, clustered bar chart just to see how these distributions um, differ. Click OK. And the output window gives us a summary. It gives us that 
It's called the cross tabulation table here, but that's just the um, contingency table. But notice, in addition to the counts, and for some reason, I guess due to alphabetizing, the female is now the, ter the top variable. Um, there were four females in the A category, and if the, if the variables were perfectly independent, on average, you would expect five, right? Well, likewise, for the males, there was eight, and you'd expect seven, right? Um, so that's what that expected. When I checked that expected box, it gave me this, these rows of um, frequencies. And then the last table is the chi-square test. There's our test statistic, 2.753. That's slightly different than the one we got by hand in the textbook, but we had to do some rounding. So this one's actually more accurate. The p-value is here under significance. It's actually a one-tailed p-value, 0 0.600. Again, slightly different than the one we got when we calculated by hand, but that was due to rounding. Um, either way, way too big, much bigger than the um, significance level, so we would fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the two variables are not significantly dependent. And this bar chart sort of gives you a, um, a visual on how, how different the distributions are. And you can see upon you know visual inspection they are they look different and some would even say that's significantly different but what our test tells us is that you know while it is different the um, it's not different enough for us to consider the variables gender and grade to be dependent variables um, okay so let's see where we're we're going to see how to do this when your data is in standard format standard format and so in standard format each row is a case each row in this situation is a student which has a gender and a grade now we do the exact same thing only we don't have to weight the variables we just go straight to analyze descriptive statistics cross tabs put gender as the rows grade as the columns it's probably worth pointing out now that these variables need to be nominal you might get away with ordinal I'm not sure but if you if you try to categorize these as scale it won't even um, I don't think it'll even let you put them in there All right but these are um, nominal variables statistics don't forget to check the chi squared okay and um, we uh, won't display the bar graphs because it's the same as the last one and we won't do the expected count. So we'll just recreate the contingency table as it is in the book. Okay, so there's the output. It looks very much the same. We're just missing the graph and the expected frequencies. There's that contingency table here. And down there we have the same chi-square test where we have the same test statistics, same p-value. It's actually easier when you have the data in the standard format. Um, again, this p-value is too big and we fail to reject the null hypothesis, meaning we conclude, um, how do we state it, grade and gender are not significantly dependent for this class. Um, okay, so that's how to do a chi-squared test of independence with SPSS. We're done. Bye.